Hello UT and hello the world, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. I love computers. They enrich my life, make work so much easier, and even allowed me to make my own website. Hmm. But what makes a computer a supercomputer? Some say it's the number of processors, some say it's the number of floating point operations, some say a supercomputer is just a normal computer without its glasses. Supercomputers are amazing tools for research in quantum mechanics, aerodynamics, and weather modeling, just to name a few, and we here at UT have benefited from our own supercomputer called Stampede. But look out, Stampede, because there's a new kid in town. Thanks to a National Science Foundation grant of $30 million, UT will be deploying Stampede 2. I got to sit down with Dan Stanzione, Executive Director of the Texas Advanced Computing Center, to talk with us about Stampede 2. So first of all, how did this project come about? So Stampede 2 is a renewal of our National Science Foundation grant for the Stampede system. It's the first time, in my knowledge, that the NSF has ever renewed um, one of these projects. Uh, Stampede was funded to be uh, more or less the flagship system of the, what they call the Exceed Network, the set of supercomputing centers that provide the computational and data resources to the open research community um, here at UT and around the country and around the world. Back in my day, I used a computer to solve tons of complex problems. So how does Stampede and Stampede 2 stack up to other supercomputers in the world? Stampede 2 might be the largest academic system um, that's out there. There's a few that will be larger. I expect it'll hit the top 500 somewhere between six and eight when, when it's all to put together. Um, and the few biggest are, um, the biggest ones in the world are actually in China at the moment. And then there's a few of the um, Department of Energy <laughs> labs in the US that will have biggest machines. I think will be the biggest university-based system um, in the world when the system comes up, but it's among hundreds at least. I know Stampede 1 was no slouch, so how will its sequel be an even bigger blockbuster, considering it's the size of a city block? Stampede 2 will obviously be a lot faster um, than Stampede 1, and, and faster is really a balance of things. Um, when we rank on the list of the top 500, we use a, um, a metric that measures on a particular computation called Linpack, um, flops, floating point operations per second, how fast you can do math. Um, we really believe in having a balanced system, um, so we'll double our peak flop number in the new system um, from the old system, but we're also doubling the amount of memory available, we're doubling the bandwidth to memory, we're doubling the storage, we're doubling the bandwidth to storage, um, because to really get useful computation, you need to go faster in a lot of different dimensions, right? Not just peak <laughs> math, um, you wanna have a balanced system. So we always strive um, to do that. So uh, we're really sort of doubling the system capacity in almost every dimension um, that we could think of. And so that's a full hardware replacement. A supercomputer of this size is capable of incredible mathematical equations, like splitting a dinner check seven ways after you've all had a few drinks. So what does all this computing power mean for the university? Really almost every line of inquiry that a university is involved in is going to have a big either data or computational component at this point. The traditional science where we've done really very well um, are things that you need to simulate with equations, right? So materials, aircraft wings, weather, <laughs> climates, um, buildings. We've done, uh, you know, we do a whole range of things, liter literally across thousands of projects on the machine, but some that uh, we've sort of focused on and had some real successes in, been a lot of things around natural hazards recently. So how, to, you know, how do we forecast earthquakes? How do buildings survive earthquakes? How do we forecast storm surge? How do we forecast hurricanes, tornadoes, hailstorms? And then how do we build an infrastructure that survives in all of those things? And we have a whole host of projects and those kinds of things, but better semiconductors, better cars, better airplanes, basic understanding of astrophysics and quantum mechanics, all of those things. Um, are the traditional problems that run on supercomputing. Um, more recently, in the last maybe 10 years, um, with the rise of what is sort of commonly referred to as big data, but really just the notion that we can get data from a whole set to all kinds of different digital instruments, from telescopes to gene sequencers to satellites to all sorts of little embedded sensors we put in the environment, have created these huge data streams in biology, um, for economic forecasting, for environmental work, for a lot of the fields that we didn't used to do in traditional supercomputing are now really part of high performance computing or large scale computing writ large. My thanks to Dan Stanzione for talking with us about UT's new big heavy in the supercomputing game and for letting us tour his heavily air conditioned facilities. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be sleeping on a cot for the summer underneath one of Stampede's cooling fans. Hey, if you like this video, leave a comment, share with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Rosas, reminding you to stay hooked.